Now, if you watched the previous training video on themes, we learned how to apply a built-in theme template to all our new email messages, where down in the body of the message, that theme would define the background, the bullets, the colors, effects, and styles. Here, I want to show you how to create your own custom theme. To do so, come up here and click on the new email message button, go to the options tab, down to the themes group, and anything that you create is going to be based upon these three elements, the colors, the fonts, and the effects. First of all, the colors. You have some default or built-in colors that you can use. If you don't like those, you can create your own, which we'll do in just a second. And these colors will define what type of objects when you insert, if it's going to be orange or smart art, if it's going to be purple, even the uh, hyperlinks within your email messages, if you want them to be red, pink, blue, all these different colors or built-in themes here. Next, let me click off in a blank area, are the fonts. You have your heading style fonts and then the body of your text, the font. So you have Cambria for your styles and then for the body, Calibri. If that doesn't work for you, you can, again, create your own. And then, of course, last but not least are the effects. In other words, when you insert smart art or objects, what type of an effect do you want to apply to it? Do you want a circle that has dashes around it? Do you want it to be able to be flat or matted? Or do you want it to pop out in 3D and have it look a little bit shiny? The only two that you can actually customize are colors and fonts. The effects are what you see is what you get here. Now, why would you want to go ahead and create your own custom theme? Well, if you're sending off email messages to different clients and you want to be able to apply certain colors and also different types of fonts, instead of constantly opening up a new message and making all those settings down below, go ahead and create your custom color once, create your font once, and then set your effects, and then save all those as one theme. Once you save it, it'll be listed down below here as a custom instead of a built-in. Of course, you can use the built-in here, which is a combination of all these three here. In other words, if you find a built-in that works for you, use it. You don't have to go ahead and customize and create all these and then save it later for your own custom theme. So let's go ahead and create our own custom theme and get started. Let me click off in a blank area. First of all, let's go ahead and define the color. Come up here, click on the colors drop down arrow. Let's say I don't like any of these. Click on create new theme colors. Now I'll tell you right off the bat that if you want to go more in depth about the explanation over the uh, theme colors here, you want to watch my word training videos. We go a little bit more in detail than what I'm going to show here. But the basics here is that looking over in the sample, you have two different types. You have a sample with a dark background with light text and objects in front of it, and then with a light background with darker text that pops out in front of it or objects. So what that means is when you look over here and you see black, it's applying to the black or dark text with a light background. So when you think of dark here and you see the dark color, just look at the sample. Black against a white background or dark versus light text against a dark background where it's white. So I can click on the drop down arrow and say for my dark text, I would like something, let's do dark blue. Well, that doesn't pop out. Let's choose something else real quick. More fuchsia. Then moving on, you actually have your colored backgrounds, where if you want a dark background, you can choose, you can see over here in the sample, looks like a very dark blue-greenish type of a color. Then you have your light background color, which is more creamed. You have your different accents, and you have your hyperlinks. Do you want your hyperlink to be, let's do orange, and then a followed hyperlink, or one that's you clicked on, that's been active, you can change that color and choose something else. In any case, when you're done setting all your colors, go ahead and give it a name. I'll call it Spiffy and then click Save. Now what I've done is I created my custom colors here. I haven't created the theme yet. Remember, a theme is a combination of all these elements. What I'm doing is I'm customizing these elements, then when I'm finished, I'll save it all under one theme name. Let's go to Fonts, down to Create a New Theme Font. Let's click up here for the Heading Font. Every time I have a heading, let's type in Mono Type Corsiva, hit the Tab key, and you can see it changes to Fancy Handwriting. And then for the body of the font, let's do Arial, hit the tab key, and let's give it a name. This is my spiffy font, and then click Save. Okay, so right now, applied to the body of my message are the colors. When I click on the drop-down arrow, spiffy, you can see that's an orange, and also the font is spiffy font. Now, if I want to go ahead, after I did all that customization, be able to save that under one theme name, so next time when I create a new email message, I don't have to go back and set all this again, or make sure that both the colors and the fonts are together. Go ahead and click on the Themes drop-down arrow and save all the current settings that you have applied, the colors and the fonts, under one theme name. Click on Save Current Theme. It takes me right to the uh, Document Themes folder, and let's call it 
and then click Save. So what this is supposed to do is when I close out, let me not save the message, and, and let's say a week later I come in here and click New, create a new message, let me go to the Options tab, and let's say I'm starting to type my message, or before I type it, let's say that this is going to a client that I want to apply my spiffy theme to. Instead of coming up here and selecting the spiffy and then coming down here and selecting the spiffy font, click on the themes drop down arrow and just select my spiffy. Automatically it updates and applies the color, which is spiffy in orange, and also the font, which is spiffy right there. So all I have to do is just start typing. Now, as you can see that that's Arial. Well, you may not see it without going back to the message tab and seeing what I've typed was in Arial. But if I want to go ahead and apply a heading to it, go ahead and select it. Let's come to the format text. Now remember, any heading that I apply is going to be in monotype Corsova because that's my theme. So if I come over to the styles and I click on heading 1, you can see that when I click anywhere within the text up here in the font group, it's got monotype Corsova, so it works. Fantastic. In addition to this, back on the options tab, if you want to give it a little color to your background, you can click on the drop down arrow and select it. And again, the page color isn't part or one of the elements of saving a theme. Only the colors, fonts, and effects. Go ahead and click send, send it off. Also keep in mind, like I talked about in the past two training videos, that not everybody can accept HTML text. Without HTML, you can't get background color or fancy font. Rich text, you can get fancy font. But again, if they can't accept the uh, HTML rich text, send it in plain text, remove the font, the background, and then go ahead and shoot it off to them. One last thing is that if you want to get rid of your themes or delete your custom colors and fonts, just click on the drop down arrow and right click to delete. And say yes. Colors, right click spiffy to delete, and then finally your fonts, right click and delete. Of course, you can always edit, left click and change that to something else besides monotype Corsica. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here, not save it. Let me click on the new message button. There's one thing I want to cover that I already covered in a previous training video, but I want to go over this one more time, that any time you create a custom theme when it comes to fonts, like for example when I type in some text here down below, some text, and then I go ahead and select it, and let's say you want to change the text with one of the font themes up here, and when you click on the drop down arrow, you hover over any of these and and it doesn't change or update the text at all, that means, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, is that you set your default text to always be Arial. If you recall in the previous Outlook training video, I warned you and mentioned, let me close out of the message here, that when you go to Tools, to Options, to the Mail Format tab, and go to your stationery and Fonts, and mess with your fonts, instead of leaving the defaults there when you first installed Outlook, you changed it to Arial or something. If you change this, your themes will have no effect on the fonts. If you want to go back, then change your font back to the default. And again, I covered this in a previous training video, but real quick, click on the font button. And it's supposed to be the uh, font name is plus body. Now you don't see it here. The only way to see it is scroll down, scroll back up, and it magically appears. Plus body. And then click OK. And the plus body, I believe, is Calibri size 11. In any case, this is Microsoft saying, look, if you want to be able to work with themes, you have to work with what we give you. You can't come in here and change the default text because then our themes won't be able to figure out or be able to update that for you. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.